No word of a lie, I've been getting this request a lot lately. I'm a man of the people, I gotta follow through on this one. Even big Virgil van Dyke's happy about it. Today, we are sending our Youth Academy staff, our three scouts, to some of the worst footballing nations in the world. And we're gonna see what we come back with. Some of the worst ranked nations, national teams, according to the FIFA World Rankings. I'm gonna prove them wrong. I wanna find some ballers, next Ballon d'Or winners. I wanna find the American Samoan Messi. I wanna find the next Ronaldo over in San Marino. Man, I I can't wait for Champions League final night. My 17-year-old Tongan Youth Academy prospect is going to be sliding in my DMs wanting some game time. <laughs> I know this sounds like a recipe for disaster, but just stick with us here. It's about the journey, not the destination. Thanks to those well-known beauties called PC mods, we are able to scout any nation in the world. This is, yeah, pretty revolutionary stuff. Now what we have to do is hire our scouts. First scout I'm going to go for, Jonas Olsen. I've got an offer for you. I've got a proposal. The Danish scout, five-star, four-star, probably the best scout on offer right now. Jonas, I hope you're prepared. I hope you're primed and ready for a massive adventure. We are off to San Marino. Basically, if you don't know, now you know. San Marino is a micro state in Italy. It's a country within a country. They are currently sitting 209th on the FIFA Club World Rankings. They are second bottom from being the worst ranked team in the world. They are one of the worst. And with this mod, obviously, in normal FIFA, you can't scout in San Marino. You can't scout in too many countries in FIFA, to be fair. Once we activate this nine month scouting network, we're just going to do any type of player. Bring us back any San Marino player. I don't care if he's a local boot from down the road get him there as you can see the mod has worked its magic and therefore we're gonna get some San Maranese talent back in our team now you're probably wondering I mentioned the second worst ranked team in the world it was San Marino at 209 but who is at 210 it is Anguilla so right now we're gonna hire a brand new scout he's gonna be slotting in in that second position we're gonna set up another scouting network it can literally be anywhere in the world it doesn't even matter at this rate we're gonna go nine months again for Anguilla and this scout is gonna search the best talent in the world Worst team ranked in FIFA history. Those are our two lucky candidates for the start of season one. What country is going to take up that third and final slot? Well, you're about to find out. America Samoa is a tiny, teeny little island located in the Pacific, in the South Pacific. Believe it or not, yes, they do have a football team and they currently hold the record. They lost out to Australia 31 0. That is a world record. I don't know how I feel about that record, but it's always good to reminisce. 31 0 in a game. Australia showed no mercy. Therefore, we're going to scout in currently the 192nd best team in the world, American Samoa. Those are our three scouts set up. You could call them maybe the three musketeers. Let's see what they bring back. Let's see how this nine-month journey scouting in the worst nations. There's no disrespect on any of these nations. In terms of a footballing sense, they're the worst nations, not necessarily as a whole. Let me just get that straight before the submarine or army come cancel me. Could Youth Academy talent from any of those three nations break into the Arsenal first team? If you do go on to enjoy the video, you know what to do. Smash Smash like, subscribe, we're on our road to 100k, and if you really want it, if I'm in the mood, let me know, should I rebuild San Marino or the worst team in the world, one of them, I, don't, I can't pick, should I make a nation great through the Youth Academy system, let me know in the comments, that could be a potential sequel in the works. Lucky us, our emails will come back in from the three scouts, I don't think I'm going to do monthly scouting updates, I might just come back and look at some highlights or some of the best players we've picked, but American Samoa is up first, another massive shout out to PC mods as well because with that we can also take a look at their potential and overall without scouting them that's what you're seeing on that right hand side for now no one's really jumping out, out at me as we take a gander Lasalo Faltose he has an 85 potential that is the highest so far has anyone come to top that 92 Saya C for my I'm gonna absolutely screw up these Polynesian names of course trust me on that one boys the pronunciations are gonna be shocking for my I'm gonna pick him up I don't know what position he plays he's 16 62 overall from American Samoa. Let's get him into the Youth Academy. With everyone else, we're going to continue scouting and continue to see if we can find that American Samoan Messi. Anguilla, what have you got for us? The worst ranked nation in the world. We've got an 87 rated Vivian Jones. I like what I see so far. We've got a few duds in here and 84 potential for Jerome Brown. I don't know what a typical Anguillan person looks like, but everyone just seems to be Caucasian or white. It's a sticky one. I don't know, EA, if, if these are accurate representations of Anguilla and Youth Academy talent. But Juan John, he's 92 potential. He's 57 overall right now and he's 15. We're going to sign him up to the Youth Academy. So at least I'm expecting one massive graduate from every 
Youth Scout monthly report. All right, somebody, you know, come on. I've been bigging you up all video. And okay, that was a terrible start. We've got a 54 rated player. Ooh, Giovanni Greco. I think these are going to be more Italian names considering they literally are a country inside of Italy. So they have a lot of Italian influence, somebody, you know, the micro state. A 94 rated Stefano Mancini. Have we just immigrated some random Italian Wonder Kid rejects? All right, we'll sign him up. 94 potential. That is all San Marino has to offer. And here is our Youth Academy team. We have four candidates so far. Two from San Marino, one from America Samoa, and one from Anguilla. Stefano Mancini, son, listen up. By the end of this video, I want you to be San Marino's own Maldini. I want you to be the thing San Marino is famous for. When you think about that micro state, when you think about that small little nation, you don't think of Eurovision. You don't think they're in a relevant country. You think of Stefano Mancini with that 94 potential. Future Ballon d'Or winner, mark my words. We're about four or so months into this Youth Academy experiment. We've had some significant events, a few progressions into this adventure. So right here, the American Samoan talent, even though we're not signing them up to the Youth Academy, some already getting dispersed out into the footballing world. So right now, we've got Tanginoa off to Atlanta over in America. We have Fleetwood Town picking up Eloni at the Kei, and then Lepetti Vainicolo. He has moved to Hanover 96. We are making an impact on the culture. The footballing world is going to be forever changed with these brand new Youth Academy talents. Trust me on this one. And even with San Marino, Luca Rossi is off to Malatia. I've got no idea who that team is, but yes, the Youth Academy talent is slowly getting spread out into the world. What I really wanted to highlight, though, was Isaac Fanalua, the type of player that just makes me stop and want to record and show you guys. This absolute beast of a talent right here. 16. He's already at 68 overall. He's got a 96 to 94 potential. He can be in that Ballon d'Or elite category. However, how does it compare to the man Dexter Wellington. What a name to start off with. His brother Dwight Wellington, he's not quite up to his brother's standards right here with 98 potential. He's going to land somewhere between 94 and 98. Dexter Wellington, welcome on in. Exactly the kind of player we want to see in our youth academy. Who knew, man? Anguilla, the worst ranked team in the world, are going to be producing some quality gems like Dexter. As we arrive into the new year and it's coming towards the latter stages of our searches in these nations, we've only got a few months left. I've got a couple of candidates up for the task, Alessandro Lombardi. 91 potential, we'll sign him up. It's been a while since we've signed up a San Marino talent, but I'm still waiting for that X Factor though. No one's really catching my eye from Anguilla as of late. We've got a couple of 85s, an 86, an 87, but no 90 plus is what I'm really looking for. Upon first viewing, American Samoa wasn't showing any signs of hosting the next Ballon d'Or winner by any means, but in this squad report, I have to look all the way at the bottom for the one and only Weary Rockenny. I might have to cut down some of the fat in our Youth Academy, to be fair, because we need to get this squad curated. I want some of the best players in this Youth Academy. And there we have it. Weary Rockeni signed to the Youth Academy. One main overview. I want to start promoting a few players into the first team. We're going to have to wait until everyone turns 16. But by the looks of things, a few players are ready. A few still age locked at 15. A few might need a couple of years to really age into this Arsenal squad. These three nations have provided more than I could have expected, knowing that some players in their national team are made up of part-time footballers. And so BCHD's out here gifting the youth of these three nations a, a chance here in this Arsenal Youth Academy, which is going to be filled up of the most unpredictable nations on earth. No one worth noting in the last American Samoa Youth Academy little scout report. We got Lasalo Piri, another Piri. He might be his brother. I don't know, but we'll sign him up. Oh, we're going to have to release players, man. This is tough. Who said we don't have an impact on the culture? The footballing world is slowly changing. The culture is shifting, and Sir BCHD's impact is being felt all all across the globe. Fabio Lombardi, do we have the San Marino Ballon d'Or winner on our hands here? This could be a very promising 15-year-old Youth Academy talent. He's 65 overall, 98 to 94 potential. He's going to be the next big thing. Lombardi for president, Lombardi for prime minister. Mate, we are finding some late gold. Oh, he's a left back. Really? Oh, come on, man. I thought he was going to be a camel striker. We've already got a few youth players. Dexter Wellington, we all knew he was destined for greatness. He wants out. Two requests from Dexter Wellington in the space of two days. So we're going to have to get to that quick. It's promotion time, boys. Who is ready for first team action? Lombardi, I wish for my. Yes, right midfielder, 87 potential. Let's promote him to the senior team. Let's get 
Davide Colombo, the cam, 1789 potential from San Marino. Dexter Wellington, he looks like an absolute unit at CDM. Isaac Fanalua as well from American Samoa, 16. Cam at 66, 91 potential. Yes, please, I'll have that every day of the week. We also do have an 89 potential right back. Okay, I'll take him. I think Hagai is actually ready. That one completely missed my radar. 525k valuation, 91 potential. A youth academy is going to remain locked and loaded as we set up some brand new scouts. Networks. The three musketeers are at it again. A Swede, a Greek, and a Danish scout are all off to scour the globe for the second half of season one and going into season two. We have three brand new nations to select. Let me think about this carefully. Our next three nations in the spotlight. We have our man Jonas Olsen. He is making the trip over to Seychelles. Our boy Kaklamanakis. He is headed off to the US Virgin Islands. He's on a one-way flight to find some of the best talent over there. As we have our scout Emil Carson, the Swede. He is off to Bermuda. Hopefully he doesn't disappear over there in the Bermuda Triangle, but that's another story for another day. Bermuda, surprisingly, is one of the best nations out of the lot. They are ranked at 168, which is quite high for this video standards. Meanwhile, US Virgin Islands currently stands at 207th, and meanwhile, Seychelles is at 204th in the FIFA World Rankings. For some reason, every time I get like a no-caller ID or just a random call on my phone, it always <laughs> links back to Seychelles, and their flag, just by looking at it, is going to give you an LSD trip. The US Virgin Islands, I mean, it's it's basically in the name. All Land of the Simpsons, that's probably more of an appropriate title nowadays. Imagine your country being named after like the biggest insult ever. And Bermuda because of the Bermuda Triangle. We're not letting any Wonder Kids free. We're not letting any Wonder Kids disappear from Bermuda. If you want to see the promoted Youth Academy players, I put them in this Arsenal starting 11. I doubt they get game time. It's that Trident in the middle, Colombo, Banalua, and Wellington. They've got decent stars in terms of weak foot and skill moves, and their work rates don't really let them down. The American Samoan goalkeeper, Hagai, has an exciting prospect tag. We also do have Fomai with an exciting prospect and the two potential to be specials. I think everyone could see this from a mile away. Dexter Wellington, Davide Colombo, no, sorry, he's only an exciting prospect. It was Fanalua who had that has potential to be special tag, and he can just play anywhere up the guts. I mean, Cam, center forward, center mid. He kind of reminds me of Kudos, the Ghanaian wonder kid in career mode. The results so far in this Youth Academy Worst Nation Scout adventure, it has been quite the journey with some unexpected results. So I can't wait to see what this second batch deliver. Let's get into it. I wasn't lying about their flag, but Seychelles, chill. 97 to 94 potential for Awushi Arumensa. He might be a potential first team striker, one of the first quality strikers we've scouted. Out of the 16, he can get promoted straight away. Adu Mensa, welcome on into the Youth Academy. This is the first. If this is the first scouting report, I'm keen to see what the future holds. US Virgin Islands, they've got a interesting flag to say the least. The Virgin Islands didn't pull through in their first scout report, but it's Eddie Abbott from Bermuda, really making a case for himself right now. 90 potential. Looks like he's a bit of a defender, wing back again. So we'll sign him up to the Youth Academy. Who thought there were all these hidden talents in nations that aren't really known for their football? So a Ushi, you're promoted to the senior team straight away. I'm just that impressed. I'm not going to lie. It's been a dry few months, but Seychelles are coming in hot. They're packing heat with Dembe Ezulike. That's a one-way ticket into our youth academy. It's the US Virgin Islands finally getting their act together. We have Solomon John. Another name which I'm going to love saying... Another, another name which I love saying right now is a goalkeeper, 15, 96 to 94 potential. You, sir, have just won the golden ticket for that number one goalkeeper spot in the future. Our first US Virgin Islands wonder kids. Were there any more? I don't think so. That is all they have to show for. And this time, all three scouted nations have something to show for. It's another goalkeeper. Chad Patterson, 90 potential. I mean, I'll sign him up, but sometimes these goalkeepers, it's just too much. Like, like relax with the goalkeepers. It's time for some promotions. We have the and Guilin Duan John finally turned 16. So the left midfielder could potentially be the Anguillan Ronaldo. You never know. 96 to 94 potential. Already valued at 825k. So that is definitely first team quality. After 18 rigorous months of scouting in some of the world's least known nations for football. This is our general youth intake. The last few months of scouting in Seychelles, the Virgin Islands, and I think it was the Bermuda Triangle. We didn't really get all too many world superstars. It has not been a productive few months over in Seychelles. Yeah, these have just been 
dead talents, basically, that our youth squad has not taken lightly to. There's no revelations, let's just say. Colton Samuel, he might be our one and only US Virgin Islands representative. Welcome to Arsenal. Finally, our man Lombardi has hit 16, and now we can promote him 92 potential left back. Very promising signs from the San Marino talents, and there we go. That's the last player we're going to promote. I don't think anyone else is worthy. Tammy James, you know what? For our one and only Bermuda talent, we'll give you a go, just so you show your nation proud. Quick overview of the youth talents. Mancini doesn't have a potential status. Fabio Lombardi, of course, we all expected it. He has potential to be special. The left back slash center back. He is a versatile defender. Has potential to be special for Carlton Samuel. The US Virgin Islands was focusing more on quality rather than quantity. As we move on to Piri, the American Samoan striker. He has an exciting prospect tag and showing great potential. Tony James, the one and only Bermuda representative. We do have Giovanni Greco, an exciting prospect. Another left back from San Marino that can play anywhere along the back line and it's Awushi Arumensa, the Shishelian Lewandowski I'm going to coin him as. He's only 16. He's already displaying shades of just world-class ability. Hey, look at that. It only took us a year and a half, but throughout a thorough scouting search in some of the weirdest nations on the globe, we have been able to field an entire starting 11 here at Arsenal, an entire youth academy set up. Oh my god, I just realized this Abbott left back has the bicycle kick straight. What is going on? We're going to need some of the Arsenal players for the experience and the guidance to lead these young'uns on to to glory. I'm hyped for all these underdog nations. These are the definition of hidden gems. They're going to combine and hopefully one day take over the mantelpiece at Arsenal. This is going to be one giant growth test and I'm up for it. Now I'm not usually one to pat myself on the back or blow my own horn, but here we see a valuable, valuable news article. Was all that rigorous youth academy scouting worth it? Arsenal sees club valuation surge under Serb ACHD. That's exactly the type of news we love to see. The future looks bright at the helm, boys, and I'm sure our youth academy talents can pull through. Here's the reality of the situation. In season three, none of the youth academy players got any game time besides Colombo. However, they did receive the most growth. So that was expected. I mean, the youth academy talents, they've been growing, gaining confidence, developing on the training pitch, learning from greats at Arsenal like Aubameyang, Lacazette, and the next golden generation here at Arsenal are learning, they are improving, and their attributes are gaining significant boosts. So this is just the start of something special. We're going to have to wait a little while though until they are main figures and key important players for Arsenal. We're four seasons deep and we're still seeing significant developments, some major improvements and definitely the progression forward we were after in terms of the American Samoan, San Marino talents, they are doing quite well. Even the US Virgin Island talent, Carton Samuel, has risen from the ashes only at 18. Still, there is a bright future ahead of them. Piri is the oldest in this team out of the Youth Academy players at 21. And the assistant managers finally putting some respect on their name with Abbott getting 33 games in a left back. We also do have Wellington with 19 appearances. Also, Fatalua with a five-month injury. He still managed to bag two goals. Piri with those four goals. And we are slowly starting to see them being integrated into that starting 11. It's kind of a sad reality knowing those nations that we've scouted brought back some of the best wonder kids in the world in 2026. Yeah, none of those nations have a national team in FIFA. So we're unable to really rank them and see their influence upon the national game to see if, you know, somebody you know, could qualify for a World Cup or if Anguilla could make it to the round of 16. We sadly, unfortunately, can never see those results. And in 2026, it's the three Lions. It's it's coming home for England. Yes, that's right. We are in 2026, eight seasons deep. And just to showcase how these youth talents progressed, our highest rated player, no, it's not you, Saliba. It is Dwayne John from Anguilla. David Colombo equally at an 89 overall as well, going up, still growing. A plus three this season. Uh, John's at 22. He's got Colombo, the San Marino cam, at 24. Dexter Wellington, this Anguillan guy, he can play CDM and center back, and he got up to an 88 at 25. Our best goalkeeper was from American Samoa. Lopetti Hagai with an 87 overall definitely was one of our big stars this season. And the gun in midfield, Isaac Fanalua. He's an all-rounder, probably one of my favorites from this video and this Youth Academy gem. He's going to be up there for me. Probably one of my favorite Youth Academy players. I mean, these two could have qualified American Samoa for a World Cup just alone. Obviously, we had to keep a few 
last two players in here because otherwise the team would be too small. The best Bermudan was Eddie Albert. And just as a little fun fact, he was the one and only player with a trait and he had the bicycle kick trait. So it was so random. Colton Samuel ended up being one of the best re or not regens, youth academy gems we found from the US Virgin Islands. I can't believe I'm saying that, but at 22, he's a left mid cam and got up to an 83. Size so for my. So American Samoa out of all the countries probably had the biggest chance of qualifying. Maybe up there with San Marino as we do have Giovanni Greco, one of the best defenders. I mean, just versatility wise, left back, center back, right back. He ended up getting up to an 82. And then we have Rokeni, yet another. Just American Samoa have just proved to be one of the talent factories in this video. Weary Rokeni at 24. Now at an 82, we do have the one and only, the striker from Seychelles, Adu Mensa. Awushi got up to an 82. I was kind of expecting a bit more from him as we probably have one of the biggest surprise packages in Lasalo Piri, a striker, the American Samoan again. They just have gem after gem. The Pacific Islanders are reveling in today's Youth Academy video as Fabio Lombardi was yet another San Marino defender. It makes sense that San Marino were producing defenders considering they're basically in Italy, as we have Stefano Mancini, didn't turn out the way I thought he was going to, and Alessio Rombardi was a little backup. And then we have Tony James, another Bermudan, we gave a chance, and unfortunately, it all didn't work out, but he still proved to be a bit decent. Did we find the Anguillan, Messi, and Ronaldo? Maybe so, maybe not. That's a controversial one. Leave your opinions down below. We definitely did find a few characters. We stumbled across some Youth Academy gold. Let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite nation in terms of the Academy prospects they produced, and who could have qualified for a World Cup, and what was your favorite Youth Academy player from all these nations? I guess it goes to show, it proves that you can scout in basically any nation. It doesn't have to be the worst. It can be the ones already in FIFA. You can find your next best thing. You can find a club legend, a future Ballon d'Or winner. It is all up for grabs in the Youth Academy Scouting Network, and that's half of the fun of it. That has been it for sending my Youth Academy Scouts to some of the worst FIFA-ranked nations in the world. If you did go on to enjoy and maybe want a part two of this, let me know down below. Hit like, hit subscribe, turn on those notifications to make sure you stay updated with all the content coming out on the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Insta. The social links are in the description down below. Have a great day. I've been BCHD as always, and I'll catch you in the very next video.